Let's talk about narcissistic fleas. When a person who has survived being in a relationship with a narcissistic person and has started to take on the behaviors of that person or over time has taken on the behaviors of that person or was raised by a narcissist and has traits or behavioral patterns that are toxic, are reactive, they're patterns or behavioral patterns that are picked up from being around, being raised by, living with, or having close association with a narcissistic person. They're usually picked up out of either just having it done to you, having the behaviors that you're now doing done to you. And so it's sort of like a learned behavior of how to relate to people in relationships or because you're going with the flow, trying to keep things just calm, trying to manage down a situation and you've learned behaviors that work with toxic people and you start doing those behaviors every time you're triggered or every time you are exposed to something that feels similar to the toxic person later in life. Your ability to adapt in situations combined with toxic behaviors that you've picked up and learned. So here's the thing, when you feel like you're seeing traits in your, when you notice yourself doing things you're not enjoying, liking, or feeling like are healthy in relationships, and you look at it and think, oh my gosh, that's a toxic trait, that's what narcissistic people do, I'm doing it now, stop judging yourself for a second. Stop and look at the situation. Look at where you learn these behaviors, why you are now acting the way you're acting or doing the things you're doing so that you can make changes to not have these narcissistic fleas in the relationships in your life that you would hope to grow as healthy relationships. So recognizing the trait, recognizing what it is. So say you don't like to take accountability because it makes you feel like you're wrong, because it makes you feel uncomfortable, like you're going to get yelled at or going to get ridiculed or going to get... Um, criticized or whatever and instead of taking accountability you lash out at the person who's saying it even if they're saying it kindly or instead of taking accountability you pretend it isn't happening and don't want to talk about it you avoid you do things that are not healthy for relationships and it's learned behaviors that you picked up from the toxic person maybe you're not doing them quite as extreme as the narcissistic person in your life but you're doing them right so say say it's something like that Observe the behavior, observe oh, when I'm told something that is not uh, right about what I'm doing or when I feel like I'm being told I'm wrong, I start to do these things. Once you do that, you can restate it, you can adjust, you can change what you're doing, you can allow and relax the situation more so that you can take in the information and see if it is really what you think is going on, which is somebody being toxic to you, or if it is something that you might want to change in your life, or it is something that you don't want to change and you want to have a conversation about it in that way. So it gives you room to make choice once you stop the judging of yourself and you recognize the behavior. Self-forgiveness is huge with this. Yes, people pick traits up from whoever they live with, whoever they're raised by, right? And yes, toxic people teach toxic behavior to their children and they teach it to you know, others around them and you pick it up in relationships, it happens. So forgive yourself for what you're doing, for what you've done, for how you act in certain situations and recognize that you wish to make change. Removing the toxic influences can be really kind of key here. If you constantly are being re-traumatized, okay, so let's get the difference between a trigger and a re-traumatization. A trigger is something unrelated that makes you think or feel or react as if it's a trauma from your past. Unrelated. A re-traumatization is someone doing the exact same thing to you, the toxic person still in your life, a repetition of the toxic things and the manipulations and all of that that has happened to you actually happening in real time. So if you can remove as much of that as you can, or if you can gray rock it, or if you can learn to allow that toxic person you can't get away from to be who they are and don't engage in it. Don't take it personal. It's really difficult. But really, if you can remove as much as you can from your life, from your the influence affecting you, it's a lot easier to see and let go of the fleas that have stuck to you. By doing all of this, you are raising your emotional intelligence. You're raising your EQ, right? You are becoming more self-aware and you are becoming a person who gets to make choice in their life. 
seeking different perspectives can be really hard for people who have had people tell them they're wrong their whole life or who have had people tell them they're stupid or not good enough or whatever horrible thing a toxic person has said to you, right? But seeking different perspectives, different points of view can get you to see that there are so many points of view out there. No one point of view is 100% accurate in the only way the world is. And so maybe you can shift the one you have that's looking through the lens of these fleas, right? That's looking through the maladaptive behaviors that the fleas are and shift it to something else, some other way of being for yourself. Learn an internal language that is fair and kind. If you can shift your negative thinking about yourself, it can help you as you're trying to de-flee. Understanding the triggers that you do have. See, sometimes the fleas come out more when you're triggered. It's not like you walk around acting narcissistic to people. It's when you're triggered. It's when you're feeling emotionally dysregulated because of something that's happening or you perceive as happening, right? So if you can learn about your triggers and learn some self-calming tips, and there are videos about that, I will make more of it and I will try and link one here. It can help you to calm before you respond instead of go into straight out reaction, which is sometimes behaviors that look like narcissistic fleas or narcissistic traits that are coming out through you that aren't really yours, they're learned behaviors. Learn to self-validate, learn to give yourself attention. All of that is a whole nother talk, but I'll just tiptoe into that a little bit and say the more confident, the more self okay you are really the more you feel like you're an okay human being the less you're reactive the less these fleas come out the less when you catch them you attack yourself for them because that's not helpful either right sometimes it can just help to listen to the other person when you are reacting in a way where you can see that what you're doing is a narcissistic flea sometimes it can help to just stop for a second and empathize with the other person, assuming that other person is not toxic to you. So say you are um, reacting to someone and you recognize you're trying to manipulate the situation in a kind of way you were taught to manipulate by a manipulator, right? And you back up and you can empathize with that other person's point of view, that other person being their own person, you know, break that feeling of needing to control the situation or you're not safe then zap all those fleas away in a second, at least for that instance. Okay, if you need anything, my name is Lise Colucci. I am a life coach that is here to help you with everything related to understanding narcissism and toxic relationships. I'm also a transformational coach. I am available if you need anything. Find me in the main description of every video. If you need group coaching, it's there as well. And if you need peer support, check it out because there's information there as well. You guys hit the thumbs up, hit subscribe, and I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye.